Greetings and welcome to the FearTech webinar. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar entitled Building the Enterprise App Store for Construction. Before we get started with the presentation, I would first like to review how to use the GoToWebinar Go to system to optimize your experience today. You've all been put on default mute settings due to lots of participants on the call. You're encouraged to please forward any questions that come up in the webinar using the questions tab. The questions will be read anonymously at the end, so please send them as you see fit. Use the orange arrow to minimize the control panel. You can also move around the webinar interface on your screen. Recording and posting of webinar will um, be done in archives at fiatech.org. This might take a couple of days to post. Thank you, and I'll now start recording. I'm Stuart Young. I represent FiaTech in Europe and the Middle East. On behalf of all of us at FiaTech today, I'd like to thank you for joining us for this webinar in a series of FiaTech webinars entitled Building the Enterprise App Store for Construction. This is a venture with our UK-based partner organization, Comet, who form part of the MobiCloud project. This is an EC-funded project, which is a corporate app store infrastructure supported by the European Commission. It consists of an application container deployed in a smartphone or tablet connecting to corporate systems via the cloud hosted platform. Today we've set aside an hour to learn from Martin Wilson of Appear about building the enterprise app store for construction. Before I introduce Martin, I'd like to remind you all that FiatTech is a member-based organization with an objective of accelerating the deployment of technology in the capital projects world. We have over 100 member organizations, partners, associates, and welcome new members into the organization. If you're interested in joining, would like more information or ideas for topics and future webinars, please drop me a note at young at fiatech.org. Now I'd like to introduce Martin, but before I do, I'll just tell you a little bit about Martin. Martin has been working with mobile technology software for over 20 years and believe, believes the application of mobile technology in workforce scenarios is only just beginning. Martin is VP at Peer, a Peer specialized in workforce mobilization software. And with that, I'll pass you over to Martin. Thanks very much, Stuart. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'd just like to say a little bit about our uh, the Mobile Cloud project before we get started, and, and tell you a little bit about that, and then we'll get into the uh, a little bit about the, the technology that we are um, we're working with, and then a little bit about uh, a project that we're doing together with Costain um, on an application called Site Diary. And at the end, I'll be able to give you a demonstration of Site Diary. And um, if you're, any of you guys are interested, we are, we're also looking for companies that are interested in uh, testing it out. So a little bit about the MobiCloud project. MobiCloud is a, a European part-funded project or co-funded project. And what that means is for every euro that uh, we as companies in this group spend, uh, the European Union provides uh, a, a matching euro uh, to the to the total of 2.2 million euros over the next two years. We're already into our first of the two years of this project. The companies involved in the project is Appear, and that's the company that I'm from, as Stuart just mentioned. There's a number of other companies. There's Comet in the UK, who have also just been introduced. There's Costain, which some of you may know. They're a very large um, engineer, civil engineering organisation. And a couple of companies you're probably less familiar with, there's Metropolis in Germany who are working on a project with the rail uh, infrastructure there, and Esperanto XL who is a, a system integrator mobile software developer based in the Netherlands. One of the reasons why the European Union is interested in developing this technology and this project is that they'd like to see a uh, greater adoption of this kind of uh, mobile technology in the, in the industrial space. And I'll come on to that in a little bit. But first, let's take a, a trip down memory lane in terms of enterprise mobility 
for those of you that have been using this technology for a number of years, there's a number of different um, uh, generations of, of tech. The first, of course, that most of us are familiar with is GSM. Um, and then the data on the GSM uh, platform appeared and Wi-Fi technologies appeared. And we have seen uh, appear the company I'm with, uh, got founded in 2001, and we've been working with rugged devices for the past few years. In the last uh, two or three years, we've we've seen together with everybody else the emergence of uh, smartphones and tablets. And initially, this was seen very much as a as a consumer-led revolution, but now it's it's become very obvious that the, the, the economies of scale have kicked in, and what you would spend maybe fifteen hundred dollars on a rugged device, you could buy three or even four, maybe even five uh, smartphone devices using Android or, or Windows or, um, or iOS. So we're very much at that point now and over the next few years we're going to see many, many more types of uh, mobile technology that can interact with this coming on board and, and the example here is of course Google Glass. So there's a lot of changes going on and it's not just about the mobile devices. There is a great um, interest now in, in business in general at adopting um, tablets and enabling their workforce to use this kind of technology. There is also the emergence of bring your own device. And bring your own device is basically companies enabling their employees to use mobile devices rather than uh, providing the devices for those employees. However, what we are seeing in some of the um, some of the projects in Europe is that there is an emergence of choose your own device. So rather than taking the full uh, leap of faith to uh, adopt any device, uh, some organisations are providing a selection of three selected devices for the employees to choose, and that's choose your own device. Enterprise stores, um, and we can include what I'm going to call the enterprise app store or corporate app store, has uh, is also emerging, and by 2015 we see more than half organizations using that to deliver applications to their employees. And it provides a very um, secure and clean way for um, bring your own device type uh, users to have access to technology like this. Then of course there is the rise of social, and there is the information complexity. And by information complexity, I, I, I think you can see that there's a lot of apps out there and it's quite complex and quite fiddly for people that are not familiar with these devices or with uh, applications to choose what to use. And context is a way that we see of being able to provide the right information to users at the right time and to minimize the number of uh, screen swipes that they might need to do. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. So against that backdrop of changes, there is a number of changes in the workforce, and we see this in terms of changing needs of, of mobile workers. There is this um, blurring in organization of what is an IT responsibility and what is a mobile responsibility. And the recent Gartner event that we participated in, we saw that the, um, the emergence of what's called the mobile center of excellence where stakeholders in an organization, not just the, the IT department, but organizations are parts of the organization that are responsible for the um, operations are also coming in coming into play and need to have their, their thoughts um, included in that. And that's what the Mobile Center of Excellence does. There's the, um, the ability to access data that's in the back office needs to be enabled easily through different devices, laptops, desktops, and PDAs, not just the existing smart um, laptops. And then we have the, the providers of the back-end systems. And what we see is that they, they have provided for a number of years big ERP systems, and they have not really thought about how those are used. They just assume that it's a desk-based uh, platform that's going to access the information. And they've been relatively slow to, to address the mobile world. And I think what we are seeing now is that a lot of them are scrambling to provide mobile access to their systems, but not really doing it in a coordinated way. So there is still a need when we, when we think about the context and the way that those applications are delivered to users 
to, to mash it together so that you have a single um, view of, of an organization's data and, and a way of interacting with that in a, in a uniform way. Mobility requires a different approach. And in a lot of organizations, there's already a lot of stuff going on in mobile. There's a lot of different projects going on, and we need a more cost-effective route to support those projects. Mobility solves workforce challenges. I think everyone can, has thought of an app that they'd like to see them um, help them with their daily work. And I think we can, we can think about six different areas here in, in an organization. And we can think of a number of different applications and in terms of employees. There's apps for training, apps to enable those employees to collaborate. Uh, there's apps to enable employees to report work that they're doing, capture opportunities for further um, work. And an example here that I'll talk about a little bit later is the site diary in the construction space. In terms of delivering projects, I think it's very important to have accurate records and to enable records to be taken simply. And in a lot of construction organizations, paper is still the primary medium for collecting information and for reporting on that information. And clearly, that's a huge opportunity for uh, revolutionizing or optimizing the, the, the way that projects, construction projects in particular, are run. There's also the environment. There's also the value in terms of the infrastructure costs. And in the Mobile Cloud project, we're not just looking at the apps themselves, but in terms of the infrastructure, uh, using technologies like the cloud to uh, minimize or even eliminate the capital costs in terms of um, supporting these projects and, and making it much more to an OPEX cost. And that's one of the key things that cloud provides. I think there's a lot of applications in the safety space as well to enable colleagues to communicate, to uh, protect loan workers, to be able to uh, instigate emergency procedures when something goes wrong and to also ensure that workers with the right permits and policies are, are supported uh, with their devices. And you can imagine contractors showing up to work and they're presented with a, an app that takes them through um, the site policy, but also ensures that they, as an individual, have the right policies uh, and the right permits. In this area of reliability and dependability, we need to make it easier to collect information to be able to report defects, for example, is another key requirement in, in a construction space. And let's not forget the customer, the, the end client who's, um, who we're doing all this work for. There is a number of opportunities to create applications for those customers, for third-party service providers to deliver information, uh, to dash, uh, provide dashboards for, for customers to see how their project is being run and how their um, KPIs are being met. So against that backdrop, we see what we're calling the construction app store. And this is a set of applications that is specific to a construction organization that captures different applications, site procedures, different project processes, um, applications for incident management, and some of the other examples that I just talked about. <coughs> we have, um, in, in order to deliver this, this corporate app store, this construction app store, there are um, a number of stakeholders. And each of those stakeholders have specific needs that need to be addressed in terms of how do you deploy those applications, how do you train the, the, the workers to use them, uh, what kind of views do the management require of, of the data that's being generated by all of these, these mobile users. Uh, maybe the IT department wants to troubleshoot the, the data that's there and, and, and generate anal analytics that can be shared across the board. Um, and also use that information to refine and improve the applications. And to deliver those new applications into the, into the App Store. So in order to provide that, this is another area where there is a need for a platform to co coordinate that. So to deliver on, on, on all those things, to deliver this corporate app store, there's a need for an infrastructure. And there's two layers within that. There's the technology layer, the platform, the, the SDKs, the applications, and the processes, and the processes that need to change to support that infrastructure. I'll start with the technology. 
it, by the way, the example here is a, an image of a, a, a phone with a set of apps on it, and those apps will appear depending on what the profile of that worker is and wh where they happen to be and what, what project that they're working on. And the apps will change, perhaps even during their working day, based on based on their needs. And that's um, that's the worker view. And then the app store is where the, the full set of applications is managed and provided. So we have the first of the key technology challenges, platforms versus silos. And what we mean by silos, I mentioned a little bit a while ago about the ERP vendors and the different um, uh, mobile platforms that they provide. If you think that you have maybe two or three different uh, solutions, those could, um, they, those could prosper and develop in their own independent right, but it may be that each of those should be interacting with one another in terms of the worker and their workflow. And in order to blend that successfully, it's, it's, it makes sense to try to pull that together in some way and, and, and provide information and, and, and um, uh, to blend that information together. And if you don't enable that, it's one of the, the key challenges for having a successful mobility strategy you may end up spending a lot of money by developing the same thing many times, for example. Second area is providing a, um, access to that to application developers, and, and that is provided through the use of a, an SDK. An SDK is a, a software development kit for those that aren't familiar with some of these, um, some of the jargon. Around about half of an application's code is actually not related to the client device, to the device that you, you hold in your hand, but actually to the software in the back end. And th th there are some challenges there. If, if you develop that once, you may want to be able to reuse it. But it also needs to support the back end configuration and any upgrades that take place to that back end. And if the back end vendor makes changes without letting you know, then all of those investments you've made into a number of different um, mobile solutions that use it um, are going to have to change too. And the, the first thing you know about it is when that back-end vendor has, has made their software upgrade. So it's very important to be able to make use of information about upgrades and include that in the SDK and also to make sure that changes to the back-end are not affecting the front-end. Another challenge is in terms of um, being able to reuse the existing code base. There is already an app for everything in public app stores. This is a mantra that we all hear a lot, one of our, Apple's favorite um, advertising phrases. But in reality, for, for enterprise, there really isn't. Uh, I think one of the challenges is taking the best of the apps that are out there on the app store and integrating them into your environment so that they fit your work processes. There is a trade-off to be had between the two, but, but don't try to reinvent the wheel every time a new business request comes along and spend six months building a new app from scratch. What we see is the, to try and adopt the best of both worlds, to have ready-made templates that you can customize as new application um, usage scenarios come along. To support all of this technology, you need to have a process to, to keep pace with it. and we. In a peer, we, we, we call this Agile, and I think everyone else is, is um, well aware that when you do mobile applications, there's two ways of doing it. One is you gather all the requirements, you nail down those requirements, and you agree a contract, and you develop it, and then you deliver it, and then the end user finally gets to hold it on day one of go live, and they say, hang on a minute, this bit doesn't work, and um, shouldn't this bit be over there, and all oh, my thumb hurts from doing this too much. And it's at that point you realize you've got to go back and change it. That's really not the way to do mobile. And the way to do mobile is to involve the end user right at the beginning. We call that the super user. And, and often it's, and what we're seeing in, in the project with Costain is that the end user is the guy that's got the requirement. He's the one with the vision about how mobile is going to uh, change his, his working day for the better. And we're working with that guy in terms of how those applications are developed because he's the guy that's going to use it at the end. 
and we're also able to pro provide a number of steps where um, some of the application can be used and tested, there can be some changes made and, and so on and so forth. And, and we call that agile. But the, the whole process in your company may not be set up for that. Um, although construction is increasingly delivering the construction projects themselves in an agile way, th this is perhaps something that is more familiar to you than, than, than perhaps we think. So in the Mobile Cloud project, we have an ecosystem of partners. And I mentioned the companies, the founding companies of the Mobile Cloud project. We're looking for other companies to join us to work in this infrastructure and to help us to build the corporate app store for construction. But to give you some examples of who those kind of groups are, there's the end users, the companies that are going to be benefiting the most from those applications. An example here is Costain. We'll talk more about Costain. I have some slides from them in a little bit. The second is the, the companies that are providing software that help your construction business in some way or another. It could be an ERP vendor, it could be a, a platform that has some kind of business process. And those independent software vendors, up until now, are not familiar with mobile. And maybe they don't have the, the time or the focus or the investment to make to, to give you the great mobile experience that's, that's needed. But by providing the, the templates and a number of um, simple ways of developing the applications, they can actually uh, mobilize their, their products and provide uh, through the Mobi Cloud platform uh, mobility to their customers. Netropolis is a company in Germany who is delivering a bunch of um, software in the rail industry and they are implementing a use case right now with, um, with the Mobi Cloud platform for, for their German customers. Then we have application developers. And there's two bunch there's two primary groups. There are the groups that are developing what we call native applications. And by native I mean if, if you want to develop an app for an Apple device, then you, you go to the Apple uh, software and you develop using Apple software instructions, the Apple SDK. If you want to develop for an Android device, then you have to use Androids. And if you want to develop for Windows, you need to use Windows. But if you want to support software for your workforce, in a bring your own device context, and we're talking about contractors here as well as employees, then those apps should be cross-platform. They should run on all of their devices, whether they're Windows or iOS or Android. And if you're going to build apps for that market, you can either do it three times for Windows and Android and, and iOS, or you can do it once using a cross-platform technology. And Mobi Cloud provides this cross-platform technology in the form of HTML5, but I, I, I'll mention that a little bit more later. We also have the system integrators. And in terms of modeling complex workflow processes and capturing requirements and making sure that back-end systems are also included into that, they, they play a very important role. And then finally, we have the, the software as a service providers. And, and I'm using our example of a peer in this because we're part of the Mobile Cloud project and our technology is the basis for the Mobile Cloud platform. We provide the, the management infra infrastructure and the, the technology that sits, sits in Mobile Cloud that, that is used by those other partners in the, in the infrastructure. In a nutshell, Mobile Cloud is about connecting back-end systems to field service employees and bringing mobility that, that takes advantage of all the information that organizations have in their, in their infrastructure. And also information that's out there in, in the public domain, perhaps in the rail context we're talking about live time tables, for example. And in the construction context, we're already integrating weather into the site diary application to take advantage of, uh, or to avoid having to fill in that information when, when reporting on conditions on a site. Within that project, we have three C's, and these are the three C's of Mobi Cloud. We're talking about context to build smarter applications. We're talking about cloud to make those um, applications less expensive to deliver, and, and in a project-led industry, that's very important. And also cross-platform, where we create an application once, and it can run on multiple platforms and, and save cost and time in terms of delivering that. 
I guess this is a technology forum, so we're familiar with cloud and, and the, the, the changes that that's bringing to the industry. If you're not familiar with it, think about it as a utility. So computing that, that flows like you turn on the tap, you have access to that as and when you need it, and it can expand and you can, you can take advantage of, of all of the benefits of that. You don't have a physical infrastructure that you have to buy. You don't have a, a big device in your, in, your, um, in your back office. Context, as we see it, is, is very key. This is something we've been working with for a number of years. It's about getting the right information to the right user at the right place at the right time. The example here is a guy who's working on an airframe uh, to turn around an aircraft in a short period of time. And he is um, clearly not somebody that has a lot of time to stab away at the screen with his fingers. He needs to get the right, uh, the right information based on the job that he's doing. And he may even be being guided by the application. And that information will change based on where he is, who he is, what the task is that he's carrying out, maybe some environmental conditions such as the temperature or humidity, and also what he's working with in terms of the assets in involved. He may also need to know about who is at hand, who his closest colleagues are, and that's another example there. So being able to weave context into applications is very important. It's also very important in terms of how that information is presented to the user. And there are two examples here. The first is a consumer application where um, a passenger is guided through an airport with an app that they've downloaded. And this app is telling them how far they are from the nearest, from their departure point, how long it will take them to get there when their flight leaves. And information on that screen will change based on the conditions. Perhaps the flight is delayed, and, and at that point, they'll be provided with some, off, some, some offers, maybe some uh, information about where they could go um, to get something to eat, and uh, maybe an online voucher. Second example is um, an employee using one of the applications that we have. And within that application, we have a number of other applications, an app within apps within app, mm -hmm. if you like. And those are, those are displayed based on the context of that worker. There's also information displayed at the top and the bottom, for example, filtered messages. And at the top, we have some uh, weather information, where their closest colleague is, and, and some other information. It's very important to have a context strategy in terms of delivering mobile. Because if that app doesn't make that worker's life easier, they're not going to be as, as uh, eager to adopt it. And there will be some cost implications there. Just a word about native versus HTML5. I mentioned what native is. Uh, HTML5 is really for, for, for web developers. And this is the second group of developers. You've got the native developers. The web developers are the guys that know how to build apps uh, on, the, on the internet. They know how to build uh, browser-based applications. And a lot of those people right now are looking at how do, they, how do they deliver the right applications to mobile users. But they're not really interested in developing native apps. So for that, we have got a number of templates in the MobiCloud platform that they can use to create what we call hybrid apps. So they would write HTML5 code that sits in a native container and, and delivers them um, the, the applications that they're looking for. So that's MobiCloud. Um, a quick summary of MobiCloud. I'd be happy to, if you're interested, to talk some more about it in, in offline. But um, we're looking for different members. We're looking for members that would like to join the community. We're looking for people that like to use applications that are being delivered by the project to create applications. We, we have access to our SDK. And for selected developers that sign up, they, they can use the SDK to create applications for free. And then we also have uh, a member program which will be following a, a number of events like this uh, training event but also certify the developers as mobile cloud developers so that they can then uh, take the applications and their, their ability to develop applications on the mobile cloud platform to the organizations that have joined the project and 
although it's a European Union funded project, this is a project that has a, a global reach and we have already a number of um, conversations ongoing with, with partners that are, that are looking to join the project from, from North America and also from the Asia Pacific region. So now I'm going to transition, uh, if you like, to uh, talk about Costain. Costain is one of the members of the project, and they're using it to deliver uh, applications to their employees. Word about Costain, they're a global engineering solution provider. They predominantly are in the construction space, but are transitioning, I think, to become more of a service-led organization. And, and by service-led, it's, it's not just about creating the infrastructure, but it's supporting it and, and managing it on their client's behalf. They have over 5,000 employees, they have a large order book, and they are, um, in, in the UK, they are very well recognized as, a, as a, uh, an innovation leader as well. This is one of the reasons why they were so excited to get involved in the Mobile Cloud project. The kind of projects that Costain deliver, they, they are uh, working with um, EDF in the nuclear space. They are delivering uh, one of, uh, playing a leading role in one of the Europe's largest construction projects, Crossrail, which is a, a, a large-scale rail infrastructure project in London. They're also working with BAA, which is the airports in the UK, uh, working in the water environment, and that's where the Site Diary project is, is um, started its life with the, one, of the, one of the engineers there that saw the need for this particular application. And they're also working a number of other projects in, in highways and education. Current challenges that cost they see. Um, they Engineers and supervisors on site are spending a lot of time there. They're spending long working days, and there's a lot of paperwork involved, a lot of paperwork. There's also um, forms to fill in, health and safety, quality asset management, so on and so forth. And they're not really optimizing that time. They're, they're not also making use of the time that they spend traveling between the office and the site. Um, that time could, could well be useful rather than playing Angry Birds on their device, they could actually be um, uh, doing some of the paperwork that is now no longer paperwork, but electronic, uh, electronic forms, for example. One of the problems that they also see where they do have um, uh, electronic access is the, the lack of connectivity and lack of real-time data as well, leading to inaccuracies in the, in the record taking that they're doing. So, part of the Mobile Cloud project for Costain is about developing a series of user cases to help drive those efficiencies and, and take those paper processes on site and in other areas of the business and turn them into electronic processes but optimized for mobile. They're working to identify key user cases and even key users who are, who are um, willing to help drive this stuff and to develop a number of applications for trial across their business. But right now they're offering these apps to a number of their employees and subcontractors in what we have discussing here as a corporate app store setup. So just to recap, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, the corporate app store for construction, this is the areas that they're looking at, and the first of which is Site Diary. One of the drivers for Site Diary is the uh, number of disputes that happen in the UK construction industry. There is, um, this is a, a news item some time ago that says that there is more than six and a half million pounds um, of construction disputes taking place where um, the average value of a construction dispute is six and a half million pounds while they're, uh, they're taking a long time to actually resolve. And this is a huge cost both in terms of um, lost productivity as well as the, the actual additional costs of paying um, for all those legal, legal advisors. 
one of the key things that supports these disputes is the site diary. And the site, site diary is, is currently a paper-based record. And what that basically means is that the, the data that is provided is not recorded in real time. In some cases, and I'm not necessarily quoting Costain here, these things pile up for weeks and weeks and they're not actually filled in in real time. And the people that actually fill them in may not even be the right people that were there at the time that the, the event happened. So there is this issue of, of the accuracy of the data, which then becomes not very useful when you're talking about a legal dispute. There's a separation of, um, of, of evidence. Maybe there are some photos, but they're stored in a different place and filed in a different way. There's the delays of projects um, due to difficulties in pulling it all together to, to reach perhaps a payment milestone and move on to the next stage of the project. And then there's the, the fact that records might just go missing. This is an example of the Costain uh, site diary form that they're using with the Heightway Agency project. And you can see there that they have to fill in information about location, what kind of work is being conducted, uh, what labor, what plant uh, was used. So this was the basis that they had for creating the site diary solution. So the user case is that the, the application should enable simple capture and recording of detailed reports and to improve the quality of the reports that they're having to be able to include pictures in that and to be able to store it centrally. To also context enable those applications as much as possible and uh, provide pre-configured choices so that people didn't have to figure out what to write, what kind of information to write. Because I think if you give people this free format, then there's a chance that they won't spell things in the right way. And when you later try to process that data, you have to invest in extra uh, time and effort to um, uh, post-process it in the back office, and that involves more people and more time and more cost. So here's what, here's what we have. Here's the site diary screen that Costain is, is, is using. We have a band on the left, which is the, the weather. We have what's called the timeline. We have a description of the events, the resources that we've used, and the details behind that, and some pictures associated with that event. So we've gone from this paper-based process to this electronic uh, site diary that is um, hosted on an iPad. We can perhaps change the date for an event, and all of these changes are captured in, in terms of the, um, the records, who's changing those events and why they're changing them. We can capture, uh, create new events. This is the new events screen. I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of a live platform in a moment as well, just to illustrate that. We can select the types of resources, and here is the predefined list of, of, of resources in terms of plant and labor. And here's a uh, view of the pictures that have been created. One of the things that's quite important for, well, it's critical, in fact, for construction is the coverage of data connectivity. Most sites, there is little, if, if, if any, um, wireless data connectivity. And perhaps this is one of the reasons why it's taken such a time for um, mobile to really break into the construction um, industry and make changes there is, is because, because of this fact. What the site diary application here has is, is got is making use of the mobile cloud offline capability to uh, sync all of that data when, the, when there is connectivity and to have perhaps even use context uh, to sync that data when the connectivity is, is of the right type and quality, and maybe cost as well, if that was an important factor. You can currently use the cost factor that, that we use Wi-Fi when Wi-Fi is available and 3G as a, as a buffer. When you've captured all that information, you also need to be able to view it, and this is where the back end c comes in. And here we see an example of the screen, and I can show you that as well in a moment. <coughs> Here's a screenshot, a snapshot of the, the cost benefits that are delivered as a result of the project, or at least envisaged to be delivered as a result of the project. What we're actually seeing is that the cost savings are going to be much higher than this because of a number of the back office processes that are also being um, transformed in, in, in the project. So. I guess at this point, 
um, we shall do a demonstration um, and then we'll be open to some questions. So I'm going to be using a, uh, I've got an iPad in front of me here, uh, which you cannot see, but what I've done is I've switched on mirroring, and mirroring uh, is basically a, a software thing you can download onto your laptop that shows what you see on your iPad screen. So this is, this is the screen of my iPad, I've got um, a number of different icons, this is all the usual screen that you'd see. And across the top here I have different um, icons. This is our showroom, which is a showcase of a number of different applications that we have in, in the Mobile Cloud project. We have a development um, icon here for developers to test out applications that they've created. Here's a, the Costain eToolkit, but I'm going to click on this one, the Site Manager, because this is the, the um, the site diary tool that we're going to be demonstrating and is available for piloting at the moment. So here's the, the access screen for site diary. We have here um, one event that's been created. I can click on the calendar button down here at the bottom left and that shows days where events have been reported have got a little dot on them, days where there's no events reported have no dots. So let's go to yesterday, 28th we can see there's a number of different events that have happened. Um, 9 a.m. there was uh, new machinery arriving and it was it was actually hailing at that point. Um, this is weather that's collected from um, based on the, the location of the, the device. So if you're reporting um, and it's raining then that data is captured and included in the record. And you can also see how the weather changed throughout the day, and you can see if that affects the events as they were as they were captured. So there's the picture, and uh, we have a um, screenshot of the picture, and if I click on it, I can actually see a full-size version of that. If I'm not online and I want to view other events that other people have, have, have had, I will still get the picture, but it'll only be a thumbnail, and, and that's an optimization that we use to try to reduce the bandwidth that's consumed. Uh, you can see there are the resources that are included. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the back end screen, which is the screen that the uh, management would use to interrogate events, add new users on the system. We have two aspects to this. We have the administration to manage core data. And here we can add contractors. We can create different labor types. We can create different plant types and we can look at some of the details of, of um, incidents. So let's add a contractor. Um, we've got Jones, we've got Smiths, who else have we got? Let's call them Wilsons because that's, uh, that's me. And um, what are Wilsons doing? They're providing some plumbing work. So we have that information, we can edit the information. We have Wilson's plumbing. So now if I go back into my into my application and I'm going to add an event, I can choose the contractor and there's Wilson's plumbing. I can um, I can create the title of the event. Um, plumbing work complete. And the location. Yeah. Heritage Mall. Um, provide a description. Um, and what kind of resources did I have? So I need to add. Um, what kind of resources? I have one laborer and I have some other, or two others, three others. So um, I'm going to save that and I'll click on category completion. And then just to prove that I've actually done the work, I'm going to take a picture. And here's you're going to see the 
Don't cover it up with my finger. I'll choose I'm going to use that. There's my picture that I've taken. I'll just take one more picture to um, see if the water plumbing works. Yeah, some of our plumbing here at the PA headquarters in Stockholm. And we're going to save the event. So there's my event. I've now saved it. It's captured the time that the event took place. And um, I think at that point I will go into the management platform just to see that that's been captured. So I can now log in and look at the events that have been captured. Maybe we need to wait for it to sync. Ah, oh, I've got the date range. Down the bottom. Contractor, Wilson Plumbing. Well, yeah, I've got a connectivity problem, I think. So it'll think when, as soon as there's connectivity available, that's one of the, uh, the aspects there. So I guess at that point, I shall hand back to Stuart and ask um, whether there are any questions. Hi, Martin. Thank you very much. There are some questions. Um, we have uh, come to the conclusion of our hour. Uh, thanks for all. Th thanks for spending it with us. Um, a recording has been made uh, of the webinar. It will it will be available on the archives within the next few days. Um, thanks again to Martin for sharing uh, <coughs> sharing the webinar with us. I hope you'll be able to join us again in the future. Uh, but before we close out, I'd just like to read the questions. Just bear with me a second. We haven't got many questions. First question was on the uh, voice quality, but uh, that seemed to go away. Um, first question is this. Um, I agree that involvement of end users is necessary since the beginning of development to ensure that apps are creating value for their jobs. However, do you reach end users that are working in the field if they are so protected by their firms. For example, foremen are very difficult to contact, even outside the job site. And SMEs that used to be forward often do not provide sufficient information about practical aspects of the job they once had. Is it through partnerships with their companies that you can reach them? Could you provide a specific example on this? Uh, I'm looking at my colleague Otis, who's been working a lot on these projects. So have you got any comments to make on that one? If, if I understand, the, hi everyone. Um, Otis Morris speaking here. Um, I handle most of the uh, business development for for up here in in, uh, in the UK and in the US and so on. Um, if I um, understand the question correctly, uh, you're talking about um, accessing feedback from resources that may not necessarily be under your jurisdiction. Um, I think one of the, the the challenges that is normal when you're, you're trying to implement mobility is sort of changing of behavior um, and, and, and there's always some evangelism that is required and some growing pains that goes with that. I think one of the, the things that helps uh, sort of bring everyone together is having that single environment in terms of your procedures, in terms of your policies. If you're rolling out a, an application that all your contractors need to access in order to, to deliver some specific works or, or a specific part of a project and it's based on your policies or your procedures um, as part of the agreement, um, arguably it's, it's one way of 
getting people in line with with your activities. Uh, we do agree that you know initially it, it could be a challenge, um, but part of having that single platform and, and single way of working, um, it sort of forces everyone to be under one umbrella. Um, if I think that if that answers your question or if it touches on the question, I hope it does. Um, Okay, thank you, Otis. Next question we've got here, Martin, is is how is your cross-platform HTML5 development framework different from other frameworks like PhoneGap, HTML HTML5 based? And um, if I can pronounce this right, uh, is it Xamarin C++ based? Uh, we have a product description available on our website, and there are some different, quite significant differences. But I, I think the the key factor that we're looking at here is that we're providing an end-to-end -end solution that is hosted in the cloud that provides the ability for for organisations to develop applications um, that are using capabilities that are specific to their back-end needs. So, it, so the platform is not just about creating those applications, but it's making sure that they have context in them and take advantage of those context capabilities. And that that's something that you don't get with the primitive uh, mobile devices. Otis, have you got a comment as well? And, and on top of that, um, Stuart, the, the, the major difference with, with things like PhoneGap, PhoneGap offers somewhat of a wrapper for you to build your application. Um, what it doesn't do is allow you to distribute and manage the application, which is uh, an additional feature of, 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 of the platform, as Martin mentioned. It's end-to-end. It's, -end. it's not only uh, sort of for the developer who goes in, creates the application, and um, when it's time to distribute, that's where things like FormGap and so on would, would fall short. I think there was a mention of a second, um, a second technology, C++, C++ if I'm not mistaken, um, which uh, applies more to native uh, developers. Um, our platform is designed to support native uh, development uh, applications. So what we have as an infrastructure is meant to support the development of an application, whether it be HTML5, whether it be a native uh, application, but also to, to go beyond uh, what folks like FormGap will do, which is just the, the actual environment to build, is also the environment to distribute and the environment to manage after distribution, add users, you know, um, monitor devices, different things like that. You, you wouldn't be able to do that with FormGap, but you'd be able to build your app and, and, and admire it. Okay. Great. Thank, thank you for that. Um, the next question I've got here is, you also mentioned a rich SDK is necessary to ensure compatibility with legacy systems. Could you tell us a bit about the Site Diaries SDK? If it does not currently have one, could you tell us about the main aspects that would need to be included in the kit? Uh, site Diary is actually an application that's been developed using the SDK. And it is hosted in a container. Um, the container is the, the app store for construction. So um, the application itself is um, is, is one example, but if you're going to create other applications that sit alongside that, that, that site diary in that kind of electronic toolkit of applications, if you like, then they would need to take advantage of the infrastructure that you have in the back end. And that would differ depending on the back end systems that you have and what organization um, that, that you're dealing with. So. Um, as more of those backends are developed, they will be available for use in other applications you, through the SDK. And if, if you have specific backend systems that are already in your, in your infrastructure, your legacy infrastructure, then you can create, using the SDK itself, um, connectors that connect to that backend and then make use of those in different applications. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question I've got here, is Costain making use of the site diary system at present? Yes. Yes. Um, I just okay. want to say anything about that. Yeah, so uh, at the moment we are trialing the site diary application on, on a particular site. Uh, the goal is to start expanding to the other sites in terms of uh, multiple site support and so on. So it's uh, it's sort of organically growing as, as we add 
additional features um, for what Costain uh, also needs. Um, okay. we, we anticipate that that will continue to grow throughout 2014. Okay, and and the, the the next question is is the diary. Um, it it follows existing processes. Whilst it's refined a process, it follows Costain's existing process. Is that is that correct? That is that is correct. And um, obviously, uh, working closely with them uh, in the MobiCloud project, they've they've given us the feedback that they encounter on a typical day to day um, basis. Um, from our side of the table, we are always open to feedback. From the from the field, from the industry, as to additional features that might enhance or enrich the application. So there's no restriction on uh, further developments to the application or adding any any features that will enhance um, the, the 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 adoptability of it by another organization. Okay. Uh, the next question I've got here is um, can you uh, indicate, can you highlight the bring your own device support for subcontractors? How does that work? The, the application is the, the application is actually on the um, on the app store, the, the container. So right. if a new contractor is, is due to join a project, what they would do is download the container from the app store and then they would be given um, access to that suite of applications that match their profile uh, by the organization that is um, providing the container, if you like. So if, you, if it's Costain and you're going to go and work at Costain for a, for a pro project, you download the container, but you can't do anything with it unless Costain give you access to their, their system. And that would normally be pro by providing you with a password and, and, and login. Similar to okay. adding a, a resource on, on the back end. So we just yeah. add, add a new contractor provide him with some credentials and whenever he logs in he would see the a the projects that are assigned to him as well as the applications within that project so he wouldn't have access to everything only the things that that would be relevant okay th thanks guys um, the next question I've got here is what's the cost associated with developing solutions as a software developer for the Mobi cloud ecosystem so in terms of development, what, uh, what we mentioned earlier is, is having access to the SDKs, which is a software you know, development kit. The, the access to that is, is free of charge. You know, if developers would like to review the SDKs, um, they are Java-based SDKs, so they're, they're, they're targeted pretty much to web, web developers. That is something they can uh, you know, have exposure to and evaluate and try to build some applications themselves. Um, in terms of commercializing application, that all depends on the market and, and what um, customers value uh, are assigned to these applications. So uh, it's, 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 there's no charge to access the environment uh, if you want to build applications. It's when you have live paying users that, that the, the commercials kick in. Okay. Next question I've got here is how, do, how does a user know if their updates have been uploaded to the server? So they're talking about, um, I think what we just added an event. Um, there is currently um, no requirement from Costain to tell the user that uh, the event has been uh, synchronized. Um, it's, it's what we call, um, you, could, you could refer to it as a trivial feature. Um, it, we could add it. All it, all it would do is uh, send a pop-up saying, you know, your message has been, been delivered. Um, at the moment, what the device does is connect with the back-end system and synchronize events uh, without any uh, further interaction from the user. Um, that way, folks don't have to continue going back to check if things have been synchronized or not. Once you've sent it, it goes. It's the device and the platform's responsibility to deliver it. Um, okay. And obviously, that could be um, cross-checked in the back-end okay. system. But like right. I said, it's a feature that can be included if someone wants to receive a pop-up. Okay, thank you. I've got two questions here. I, I think they're one and the same. Um, where can the SDK be downloaded? Or where can I find the SDK documentation? I think you probably answered that already, but uh, just run over that again, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, so our SDKs at the moment are not publicly available. Um, if someone is interested, um, just... Uh, I guess through the nature of the MobiCloud project and yeah. how we are uh, developing the features, we will provide credentials to anyone that wants to access the SDKs. Um, you could 
envision that um, maybe Q2 next year or maybe end of Q1, we may decide to make it publicly available. Um, there's no, no need for us to do it yet, um, but we can certainly make it available to whoever needs it. Great, thank you for that. By email, it's, it's, a, it's basically sending a link with, with, with credentials for them to log in and access. Great, okay. Um, I've, got a, I've got one more question mark here, um, and, it, and it, it starts off with uh, .NET cross-platform. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything on that, but um, fire yeah, so, away. <laughs> well, .NET, um, as I mentioned before, with the SDKs are, are based on, on Java. .NET it would be uh, a development strategy that would be a little bit different in terms of building an integration adapter that speaks with our platform. But there's no reason why uh, a .NET developer couldn't build an integration adapter that sits in his own environment but speaks to our platform. Um, that is being done currently with one of our application, um, I would call them application partners. They would be building an application for one of our customers on the, in the environment, but they have a .NET team, and so that's the skill set they would utilize and um, build the integration adapter towards uh, the proficiency that they have, but it will still be able to speak to the to our platform. The what what we've done with our SDKs is making uh, the integration adapter development quickly and easily uh, doable for folks that come from a Java background that build web applications. So if if you're a Java developer. Um, building a, an integration adapter it would be you know uh, a little bit faster than someone doing it in .NET because they would have to do some tweaking um, on their own so it's not major but you know that would be the approach okay thank you Otis um, one question here is uh, can Otis identify his uh, his last name and um, and title for clarity absolutely so okay. I, I will uh, speak slowly as well um, it's Otis Boris, and my role here is uh, business development for Appear. And okay. as I mentioned before, I, I handle a lot of the activity outside of the Nordics because we're based in Sweden. Um, so every, obviously everything in the UK, and, and also my Swedish is horrible, so they don't want me to speak with anyone in <laughs> Swedish. Um, but uh, I will uh, interact with you know other other countries across Europe and also in the US. Great, thank you for that. One one final question before we close out. There's no more come through, but um, the, the the involvement with with Comet and uh, and, and Costain. Um, when, when did that start, and and, and how many um, how, how many parts of the, each organisation are involved? Well, uh, in terms of the relationship with Comet, um, that I would say is more than a year old. Um, that was something when I uh, when I first started working with with uh, the UK, I came across the organisation and I, I reached out to the group um, Neil and 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 the guys and and that's you know with their goal of promoting mobility, uh, IT in, in in construction, there was an obvious synergy there because we were all about mobilising systems. So. Um, from that aspect, um, you could you could say we we engage about a year and a half ago, um, and and then coming out of that uh, relationship and that activity, um, Appear as as a company does do a lot of research uh, with regards to mobility, a lot of uh, European projects, um, which our, our CEO was uh, obviously heavily heavily involved in, in generating the Mobi Cloud opportunity. You know, through through the European Commission, and and we saw a great uh, opportunity there to align what we're trying to deliver in terms of our platform with uh, partners and or clients uh, in the industries that we we typically work in. So obviously, I was travel and transport with the rail guys, and then in construction with folks like Comet and Costain. So great. I hope that answers the question. Thank you very much for that, Otis. Well. I don't think there's any more questions now. Um, we, we, we are just over the hour. Um, I, I say thank you again to everybody. Thanks to Martin and thanks to Otis, um, for, for Martin for delivering the presentation, Otis for supporting and answering the questions. Um, 
I hope you'll be able to join us in future for, for um, further Fiatech Tuesday webinars. Um, please contact Fiatech if you'd like to do or have um, an idea for the future uh, webinar sessions um, to hopefully advance capital projects and, um, and the develop of, development of innovation in the industry. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.